got him, got him. <laughs> we got it. We got it, Baz. <laughs> Getting better at PvP is absolutely essential to actually enjoying playing Escape from Tarkov. Even if you don't want to be one of those PvP chats that's chasing down fights all the time, just by playing the game you're absolutely going to be getting into fights with other players, sometimes with those chats that are chasing you down, or sometimes you're just doing a quest or something and you get into an unavoidable fight. So in this video I want to break down some of the tactics that those PvP chats like to use to kill you and take your loot so that you can apply them. This is kind of a mashup of our teaching tactics and lessons from Beyond the Grave where we take a look at some clips from my stream and figure out what we can learn from these clips and how to get better at Tarkov. If you like the video, think about dropping a like or commenting down below, and I also stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch. All my links will be down below. I'd love to have you stop by and say hey. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so we've got a few clips to look at. We'll breeze through them pretty quickly. This first one, I'm playing solo. I'm on Shoreline. I hear some people coming and I get into a fight with them. We'll kind of watch the clip and then go back and break down what they did and why in this particular instance, they won this fight. Let's take a look. If you see an Apple store get robbed, does that make you an eyewitness? All right, so super short clip there and you can see the frustration on my face. So to go back and kind of play this back, uh, it's pretty simple. I get to resort first. I'm looting 110. As soon as I get in here and start looting, I see these guys. I've got a full auto gun and I don't like engaging people running across here. I'm most likely not going to hit my shots. I know there's two of them. I don't want to give them like so many options. They could go prone. They could go down the rocks. They could flank around to admin. These fights never really work unless you can absolutely eliminate them. So I don't want to do that. I want to wait. I know where they're going, right? Like I know that they are coming to the resort. I move slowly. I don't sprint. I don't want to give them audio. I even slow down my movement again. I'm holding a right side peak. So I'm thinking like, I've got this. I'm going to win this fight. I'm trying to utilize like kind of all the things I've learned, right side peaks, crouch for the recoil. Uh, I, these guys are full sprinting. So I think they don't hear me first guy comes in uh this guy does well in peeking and raising his gun you never want to be just rushing around a corner you always want to raise up your gun it's just that i was here waiting for him so i get to kind of aim punch him there as i'm fighting this guy i see this guy peek a little bit so i knew there was two now i know exactly where he is the thing that i underestimated is that now he also knows exactly where i am so this is kind of where the mistake is i probably should have uh left in my head i'm thinking i'm holding this right side peak still i've got plenty of ammo left in my 75 round mag like i'm gonna get this second guy too and i underestimated the fact that this guy just watched his friend die and uh now he knows exactly where i am now what's interesting about this the tactic i want to break down here is that he wide swings on me instead of just peeking this corner ever so slightly he wide swings pre-fires and picks up the kill and this is one of those like super nuanced you know chad tactics in that normally you want to peek as little as possible you're always hearing people say right side peaks jiggle peaks you want to peek as little as possible but what this guy has going for him is that he knows where I'm at. A lot of times you're trying to right side peek to get information or because you're not sure if a guy's all the way down there or close. This guy knows exactly where I am. He hasn't heard me move. He hasn't heard me run. So he gets to pre-fire at a round waist or head height and just rip across this corner. And that makes him less predictable for me. I'm assuming he's going to tightly peek this corner or throw a grenade in or something like that. It's less predictable for him to super wide swing because of that you kind of have to go from me being a stationary holding the angle to try now I'm playing catch up he's swung right by me I'm trying to catch him with my reticle and because he's pre-firing and because he's using uh because he's probably not ADS so that his movement speed is as quickly as possible a lot of times if you're ADSing your movement speed's about cut in half so if he's going to swing me like this he's probably point firing and pre-firing because he knows where I'm at he wide swings making him a little bit more unpredictable to hit for me as I'm trying to play catch up there I way over swing it and then I try and return to center he's aim punching me and I'm dead he hit me with three shots I believe five five a one was what got me there and I'm just dead so I think that's the key takeaway there is uh you know don't hold an angle too long if you feel like an enemy knows where you are maybe reposition but this is something to watch out for in situations like this you will find a lot of times these chads go for these crazy wide swings and in the back of my head I'm always like dude why did he peek that so wide and why did that work well he made himself unpredictable because he already had all of the knowledge he needed exactly where I was kind of what gun I was using based on the sound that I had shot a bunch of ammo already and he was able 
able to just wide swing. It's risky because if I got lucky with a headshot with the recoil took me up, then he dies, but uh, he committed and it absolutely worked for him. So that's something to watch out for. Do the right thing like I did for the first kill. Hold the right side peaks, you know, do whatever you can. But a lot of times if there's two, even if you're in a good position, if you've given away the information of that position, reposition and try to clean up the other kill a different way. So now we'll take a look at a clip where it's the flip side where we won the fight and see what we can break down there. Yeah, quite a, quite a bit. Yeah. 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 That's a big boy. He closed the door. He closed the door. I'm gonna cross, he's healing. Okay. I'm gonna try and open it. I'm hurt a little bit. He's still in there. Okay. He's hurt too. Yep. I'm healing. He's taking drugs. I'm coming out. I'm gonna open it this time. Yep. I'm gonna prep a nade. Oh. Got him, got him. We got it. We got it, Baz. <laughs> All right, so that was a super fun fight where we basically got to reverse the roles there. We were the two-man coming in against the solo, and uh, immediately she engages. It's kind of the same thing. He heard us coming. He engages with uh, Bazinga that B, and uh, she kind of, like, pushes him by engaging back with him, pushes him into this room. Now, this was his big mistake uh, if that you don't really ever want to do in PvP, but especially if you're fighting somebody who's proficient, you don't ever want to lock yourself in a room with no exits. This is 112. There is no way out except this doorway. And when he engaged with Baz, he probably should have moved out, rotated, even if that was a risky play, even though we may have swung him and shot him in the back, it would have been his highest chance for survival to get out and get to one of the other rooms where there's a little bit more maneuverability. Uh, yes, there was a chance that he 1v2s us when he's in that room, but this is a really rough place to be, as you'll see. So we kind of like pin him in there. He closes the door, which is definitely a play because now some sort of action has to be taken before he can die. A door has to open. So that keeps him at least a little bit safe. We can't throw nades in there. It was smart by him, but me and Baz immediately start to separate. She tries to cross over. She shoots into the door he shoots out i think she takes a little bit of damage there's a bunch of bullet holes there but we split and now we've got both sides of the door she's hurt a little bit she's calling out that he's healing he's reloading while she's doing those things i don't want to push this clip is all about opportunity he was reloading with this door closed but there's no way i could get around this thing in front of me open the door and push in before he cleans up that reload or same thing with the heel or taking a stem so yes there's always that like he's reloading he's metting you want to push it's all about opportunity which is exactly what happens here i wait for my teammate to heal up um, he, you know, she opens the door, which this will be in the next clip we look as well. You never want to open a door straight on for this exact reason. She opens it from the side and she immediately backs up. He kind of takes the opportunity to swing and dump his entire mag thinking he's attempting to pre-fire as we push in. We kind of both know that that's what he's going to do. So we don't immediately go in. And once again, opportunity. Now he's initiated that reload, but the door is open. So even though my teammate called out that she was prepping a nade, I know this is the opportunity. If a nade goes in there, he's got time to seat that reload and then maybe get to cover, maybe hide behind the door. Maybe the nade doesn't uh, kill him. And then now we are in a bad situation where he's reloaded and we have to push. So I see the opportunity. I push in around. I actually got super lucky because he initiates closing the door right now. I get in, I turn around, boom, I clean him up and uh, she diverts the nade. She was throwing the nade. She saw I went in and she threw it down the hall. She says, don't come out of the room. Boom, we have cleaned up the kill. This was a super fun fight. And the takeaways here are if you're in this position, don't put yourself in this. The next clip is the exact same thing where uh, a, a group of guys just hole up in here. You never want to be in a position like this. Uh, and if you do, if you're the aggressor here, th the things to kind of pull away, you know, never go right up to a door and open it. This happens all the time. The whole door pre -fire. You want to come in at the side and then back away from the door. Um, and it's all about opportunity. Not every time somebody's reloading, you need to push them. Not every time somebody's metting, you need to push them. It's waiting for the right opportunity. He tries to pre-fire us here and it's a perfect opportunity. He left the door open. I go in for the push and this guy is now, uh, he was 
closing the door. I've got him to the side. He probably hadn't done that reload yet, and I'm able to clean him up, especially since some shots were taken earlier, and this guy was probably a little bit hurt. So we'll take a look at one more clip in the exact same spot on shoreline where a similar thing happens. I think there's two. All right, so very similar situation there, although there's still some more to learn. This time I was solo and there was a two man. They locked themselves inside. I wasn't in a fight with these guys. I was moving over and I thought I heard them on wood and I heard this door close and you even hear me say, I think there's two. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm kind of clearing the area. This is another kind of tip that uh, chads are much more aware. We did a video about this. A lot of times those PVP guys are gonna be a lot more aware of their surroundings. Even though I know for a fact there's at least one guy in there, I'm not I'm trying not to get tunnel vision. I'm trying to clear the area at least. Maybe there's two in there, but there's another one out here. Maybe it's a five man. So clearing the area, I know that these guys aren't going to kill me unless they open the door. So I'm kind of trying to be uh, as cautious as possible. I ditch the backpack to make me as light as possible. And uh, I kind of start trying to figure out what I want to do around this fight. I check to make sure I'm on painkillers. And as I kind of like move around here, as I'm like, okay, I feel like I'm going to take the fight with these guys. I put one or two shots through the door just to see if I can bait out some movement. But the goal here was to get to the other side, once again, for the right side peak. It's the foundation of PvP and Tarkov, at least currently. Maybe we get shoulder swapping one day. Same thing here. I go in for the door and back away. I don't want to open the door head on for this exact reason. This guy dumps his entire mag as I do that. Now I've got the time to kind of take the right side peek. I kind of do the same thing that that guy did in the first clip. I wide swing this. I go all the way across the store, the door, instead of just peeking the right side, I go all the way across. I am ADS. I actually think point fire might've been better there because my movement speed would have been quicker, uh, but I ADS on this guy. I eliminate him. I believe that I eliminate him because I don't hear any shots. I do a quick peek to make sure he's dead. I go back to the right side peak, kind of showing my shoulder to this guy, not sure where he is. I bait out another pre-fire, uh, and I go in and am able to push him. Same thing, this guy is closing the door, and I'm able to kill him in the exact same, same angle as the one before. Now, there's a few important things to pick up here. Uh, one, after I kill this guy, I don't immediately reload. You'll be surprised at how many times we reload when we don't need to. We have half or more than half of our magazine left, and not reloading uh, didn't give this guy an opportunity to push. It didn't give him any audio cues. He knows that I killed this guy. He's not sure what's going on. He's not sure where I am. I'm just holding the corner. I'm ADSing. I know that I didn't have to mag dump this guy too much. And then another thing to pick up here is this guy dumps about half his mag and you can see I wait a second a lot of times I've died from people baiting me they shoot some shots and then they think that I'm gonna think that they're gonna reload it's basically baiting me into pushing if you shoot a few shots a lot of times people think that guy's gonna reload and they'll push and so he shoots a few shots I don't immediately push the shots I'm waiting I'm like wait what is this guy gonna do I'm not sure. He doesn't initiate the reload, but I just kind of feel like this is my moment to push in. I end up getting him in the same thing. That's his hand going to close the door. I pre-fire. As you can see, I was firing before I even knew where that guy was, and I'm able to swing on him and catch him right there. We were able to clean up two kills there, and then that was like a super fun fight. So I hope that these clips helped. I don't want these to be too long-winded, but... PvP in Tarkov has so much nuance to it. There's so much to it. So as I'm learning and trying to implement these more like Chad strategies, uh, I want to share these with you and kind of give you examples of when I die and when I'm able to implement these. So hopefully you can use them to get better. Once again, whether you want to be a PvP chaser or not, knowing these things and knowing how to just turn that on in an instant to clean up a fight means you're going to have so much more fun in Tarkov. So I hope these help and I hope that you go out there and start slaying out in Escape from Tarkov. Thank you so much, as always, for taking the time to check out this video. If you liked the video, think about dropping a like, commenting down below, or subscribing to the channel for more content like this. I stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch. All my links will be down below. I'd love to have you stop by and say hey. And if you're looking for people to play Tarkov with, our Discord server is an awesome place to be. That link is down below as well. Thanks again for stopping by, and I will definitely see y'all on the next one.